Chapter 1 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are on the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. Chapter 1 The Book of the Generation of Jesus Christ, the Son of David, the Son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judah and his brethren, and Judah begat Perez and Sarah but Tamar, and Perez begat Aswan, and Aswan begat Ram, and Ram begat Amenadab, and Amenadab begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Solomon, and Solomon begat Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king. And David begat Solomon of earth that had been the wife of Uriah. And Solomon begat Rehoboam. And Rehoboam begat Abisha. And Abisha begat Asa. And Asa begat Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat begat Shoham. And Shoham begat Uzziah. And Uzziah begat Jotham. And Jotham begat Ahaz. And Ahaz begat Ezekiah. And Ezekiah begat Manasseh. And Manasseh begat Amon, and Amon begat Josiah, and Josiah begat Jeconiah and his brethren at the time of the carrying away to Babylon. And after the carrying away to Babylon, Jeconiah begat Shealtiel, and Shealtiel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat Abiud, and Abiud begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Asor, and Asor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Achim, and Achim begat Eliad. And Eliad begat Eliezer, and Eliezer begat Mephon, and Mephon begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham unto David are fourteen generations, and from David unto the carrying away to Babylon, fourteen generations, and from the carrying away to Babylon unto the Christ, fourteen generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But when he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for it is he that shall save his people from their sins. Now all this is come to pass, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, God with us. And Joseph arose from his sleep, and did his angel of the Lord command him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth a son, and he called his name Jesus. End of chapter 1now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For he saw his star in the east, and are come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard it, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, land of Judah, art in no wise least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come forth a governor, which shall be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Elt Prithri called the wise men, and learned of them carefully what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, and said, Go and search out carefully concerning the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word, that I also 
may come and worship him. And they, having heard the king, went their way, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And they came into the house and saw the young child with Barry his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. And owning their treasures, they offered unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared of the Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I tell thee, for else who will seek the young child to destroy him. And he arose and took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt did I call my son. Then Herod, when he saw that it was mocked of the wise men, was a staying wolf, and sent forth, and slew all the male children that were in Bethlehem, and all the boys thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time when he had carefully learned of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Weimar, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and she will not be comforted, because they are not. But when Elth was dead, behold, an angel of the water appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead that sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was squatting over Judea in the womb of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. And being warned of God in a dream, he withdrew into the parts of Galilee, and came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, that he should be called a Nazarene. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version This script of Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien And in those days come of John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make ye ready the way of the Lord, make us prostrate. Now John himself had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his food was crocusts and hard honey. They went out unto him Jerusalem and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan. And they were baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said unto them, Ye ask me of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruit worthy of repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, For God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And even now is the axe laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh out of me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will fully quench his flashing floor. And he will gather his wheat into the garner, but the shaft he will burn up with unquenchable fire. Then came of Jesus from Galilee to the Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John would have hindered him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? But Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered with him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway from the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove, and coming upon him, and lo, a voice out of the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, 
in whom I am well pleased. End of chapter 3「Chapter 4 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This Ripple Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. Then was Jesus swept up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he afterward hungered. And the tempter came and said unto him, If thou art the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him into the holy city, and he set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou art the Son of God, cut thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and on their hands they shall bear thee up, lest every fell dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, Again it is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him unto an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee and say, For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now when he heard that John was delivered up, he withdrew into Galway, and leaving Nazareth, he came and traveled at Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the borders of Sabulum, and after lie. Then might be fulfilled which was spoken by a side of the prophet, saying, The land of Sabulum, and the land of Naphtali, toward the sea, beyond John, Galway of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, to them did light spring up. From that time began Jesus to preach, and to say, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brethren, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for there were fishes. And he saith unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left the nets, and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Stepadee, and John his brother, in the boat with Stepadee their father, met in the nets, and he called them. And they straightway left the boat in their father, and followed him. And Jesus went about in all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of disease and all manner of sickness among the people. And the report of him went forth into all Syria, and they brought unto him all that were sick, halting with thousands of diseases and torments, possessed with devils, and epileptic, and palsied, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes from Galway, and Decapolis, and Jerusalem, and Judea, and from beyond Jordan. End of chapter 4 Chapter 5 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This Ripper Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, and when he had sat down, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are they that have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall reproach you, and persecute you, and say all men of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt 
hath lost its savour, where is shall it be salted? It is thence for good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men lie a lamp, and put it under the bushel, but on the stand. And it shineth unto all that are in the house. Even so let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I come to destroy the law of the prophets. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. For fairly I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass away, one shot or one tittle shall in no wise pass away from the law, till all things be accomplished. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said to them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that every one who is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Waka, shall be in danger of the council. And whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of the hell of fire. If therefore thou art offering thy gift at the altar, and thou rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art with him in a way, lest apply the adversary deliver thee to the charge, and the charge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Fairly I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hath paid the last farthing. Ye have heard that it was said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that every one that looketh on a woman to last utter her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye cause the thee to stumble, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members shall perish, and now thy old body be cast into hell. And if thy right hand cause thee to stumble, cut off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members shall perish, and now thy old body go into hell. It is said also, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a wife of divorcement. But I say unto you, that every one that putteth away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, make of her an adulteress, and whosoever shall marry her when she is put away committeth adultery. Again, ye have heard that it was said to him of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord fine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by the heaven, for it is the fight of God, nor by the earth, for it is the full store of his feet, nor by Jerusalem, for this is here the great king. Never shalt thou swear by thy head, for thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your speech be, Yea, yea, nay, nay, and whatsoever is more than these is of the evil one. Ye have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, Resist not him that is evil. But whosoever smiteth thee on thy way right cheek, Turn to him the other also. And if any man would go to law with thee, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cheek also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go one mile, go with him train. Give him the ask of thee, and from him the would bow of thee, turn off thou away. Ye have heard that it was said, Thou shalt love thy neighbour, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, and pray for them that persecute you that ye may be sons of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good, and saith rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them that love you, what all have ye? Do not even the pagans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the Gentiles the same? Ye therefore shall be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. 
End of chapter 5. Chapter 6 of the Gospel According to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This Ripple Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Glenn O'Brien. Take heed that ye do not your righteousness before men to be seen of them, else ye have no reward with your Father which is in heaven. When therefore thou doest alms, sell not a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have received their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. The fine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall recompense thee. And when ye pray, ye shall not be as hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily and say unto you, they have received their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thine inner chamber, and having shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall recompense thee. And in praying, use not vain repetitions, as the Gentiles do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of, before ye ask him. Out of this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, I would be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven so on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us the debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And bring us not into temptation, but with us from the evil one. For if ye forgive men the trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may be seen of men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have received their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy face, that thou be not seen of men to fast, but of thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall recompense thee. Weigh not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth consume, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth consume, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where thy treasure is, there will thy heart be also. The lamp of the boy is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy old boy shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy old boy shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, be not anxious for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the wife born in the food, and the body than the raiment? Behold the birds of the heaven, that they sow not, neither do they weep, nor gather into barns, and your every father fear of them. Are not ye of much more faith than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cupid unto his stature? And why are you anxious concerning raiment? Consider the wearies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, nor do they spin. Yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not a white white one of these. But if God doth so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and to what is cast into the oven, shall we not much more clothe you, or ye of little faith? Be not therefore anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Be not therefore anxious for the morrow, for the morrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. End of chapter 6 
Chapter 7 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This Ripple Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye mit, it shall be measured unto you. And why beholdest thou the mote there is in thy borough's eye, but consider was not the bane there is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me cast out the mote out of thine eye, and lo, the bane is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, cast out first the bane out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see query to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, never cast your pearls before the swine, lest happily they trample them under their feet, and turn and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And what man is there of you, who, if his son shall ask him for life, will give him a stone, or if he shall ask for a fish, will give him a serpent. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them to ask him? All things therefore whatsoever ye would that man should do unto you, even so do you also unto them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in by the narrow gate, for why is the gate, and boy is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many be they that enter in thereby. For now is the gate, and straightened the way, the way of unto life, and few be they that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inward we are wavering wolves. By their fruits ye shall know them. Do men give a grace of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, nor can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Therefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy by thy name, and by thy name cast out devils, and by thy name do many mighty works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Everyone therefore which eareth these words of mine, and doeth them, shall be likened unto a wise man, which bears sails upon a walk, and the way descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon the rock, and every one that heareth these words of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew, and smote upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall thereof. And it came to pass, when Jesus entered these words, the multitudes were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as their scribes. End of chapter 7。Chapter 8 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version。This web of Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien and when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came to him a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he stretched forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou made clean. And straightway his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses committed, for a testimony unto them. And when he was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, 
Lord, my servant life in a house sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And he saith unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come unto my roof, but only say the word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having unto myself soldiers. And I say to this one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom shall be cast forth into the outer darkness, and there shall be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in that hour. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his close brother lying sick of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she arose, and ministered unto him. And when even was come, they brought unto him many possessed with devils. And he cast out the spells of a word, and it all that was sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by side the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our diseases. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And there came a scribe, and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whether so whether thou goest. And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the heaven have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to wear his head. And another of the disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus saith unto him, Follow me, and leave the dead to bury their own dead. And when he was entered into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the boat was covered with the waves, but it was asleep. And they came to him, and awoke him, saying, Save, Lord, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marvelled, saying, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? And when he was come to the other side of the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming forth out of the tombs, exceeding fears, so that no man could pass by that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, foul son of God? Art thou come ever to torment us before the time? Now there was afar off from them a herd of many swine feeding. And the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, send us away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And they came out, and went into the swine, and, behold, the whole herd rushed down the steep into the sea, and perished in the waters. And they that fed them fled, and went away into the city, and told everything, and what was befallen to them that were possessed with devils. And behold, all the sea came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart from their borders. End of chapter 8、Chapter、9 of the Gospel according to Saint Matthew, Revised Version. This web of Foxer Coin is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. And he entered into a boat and crossed over and came into his own sea. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on the bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, for thy sins are forgiven. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore, think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Five sins are forgiven, or to say, Arise and walk? 
but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go unto thy house. And he arose, and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they were afraid, and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And as Jesus passed by from thence, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the place of toll. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eat of your master with the publicans and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye, and learn what this meaneth. I desire mercy, and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Then come to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we in the Pharisees fast oft, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto him, can the sons of bride chamber mourn, as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then will they fast. And no man putteth a piece of undressed cloth upon an old garment, but that which should fill it up take it from the garment, and the worst quent is made. Neither do men put new wine into old wineskins, else the sins burst, and the wine spilled, and the skins perish. But they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. When he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a ruler, and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose, and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman, who had an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him, and touched the border of his garment. For she said within herself, If I do but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. But Jesus turning and seeing her, said, Daughter, be of good cheer, thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, and saw the fruit prayers, and the crowd making a tumult, he said, Give place, for the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the crowd was put forth, he entered in, and took her by the hand, and the damsel rose. And the fame hereof went forth into all that land. And as Jesus passed by from thence, two blind men followed him, crying out, and saying, Have mercy on us, thou son of David. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto him, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They say unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touch he their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it done unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus strictly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they went forth, and spread abroad his fame in all that land. And as they went forth, behold, there was brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb man spoke. And the old Jews marvelled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, By the prince of the devils casteth ye out devils. And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and hearing all manner of disease and all manner of sickness. But when he saw the old Jews, he was spurred with compassion for them, because they were distressed and scattered, as sheep not having a shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The hour's joy is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the law of the harvest, that he send forth laborers into his harvest. End of chapter 9、Chapter、10 of the Gospel according to Saint Matthew, Revised Version. This Ripperfox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. And he called unto him his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of disease and all manner of sickness. And the names of the twelve disciples are these.
the first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew's brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John's brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Apharius and Phidias, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and charged them, saying, Go not into any way of the Gentiles, and enter not into any sea of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. Freely ye receive, freely give. Get you no gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses, no rod for your journey, neither two coats, nor shoes, nor staff. For the laborer is worthy of his food, and into whatsoever city or fish ye shall enter, search out who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go forth. And as ye enter into the house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, as ye go forth out of the house of that sea, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah and the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I sent you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and armors as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and the synagogues they will scourge you. Yea, and before governors and kings shall ye be brought for my sake, for testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, be not anxious how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father that speaketh in you. And brother shall deliver up brother to death, and the father his child, and children shall rise up against parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, for ye enter next. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone through the seas of his soul, till the Son of Man be calm. A disciple is not above his master, nor servant above his Lord. It is not for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in the darkness, speak ye in the light, and what ye hear in the ear, but claim upon the housetops. And be not afraid of them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not dispersed soul for farthing, and not one of them shall fall on the ground without your father, but if they ask of your head are all numbered. Fear not therefore, ye are of more faith than many sparrows. Everyone therefore who shall confess me before men, him will I also confess before my father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him who I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I came to send peace on the earth, I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I came to send a man in variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth a father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that doth not take his cross and fall after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth, you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give the drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only, in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. End of chapter 10
Revised Version This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Glenn O'Brien And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and preach in their cities. Now when John heard in the present the works of the Christ, he sent by his disciples, and said unto him, Art thou he that cometh, or look we for another? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Go ye way, and tell John the things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are quenched, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good times preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall find none a cash of stumbling in me. And as these went their way, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes to say, John, What went ye out into the wilderness to behold? Are ye shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man quoted his sought raiment. Behold, they that wear sought raiment are in king's houses. But wherefore went ye out? To see a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. Fairly I say unto you, Among them that are born of women that have not arisen a greater than John the Baptist, yet he that is but little in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffer with violence, and men of violence take it by force. For the prophets and the world prophesied unto John, And if ye are willing to receive it, this is Elisha, which is to come. He that hath ears to hear, where am here. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the market places, which call unto their fellows, and say, We piped unto you, and ye did not dance, we wailed, and ye did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a grotinous man, and a wine-bibber, the friend of publicans and sinners, and wisdom is justified by her works. Then began he to obey the seas wherein most of his my works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Shuasan! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the my works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which were done in you, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Albeit I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Cabernium, shalt thou be exalted unto heaven? Thou shalt go down unto Hades. For if the mighty works had been done in Sodom, which were done in thee, it would have remained until this day. Albeit I say unto you, there shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that season Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou didst hide these things from the wise and understanding, and didst reveal them unto babes. Yea, Father, for so it was well pleasing in thy sight. All things have been delivered unto me of my Father, and no one knoweth the Son, save the Father. Neither doth any know the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son willeth to reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are every land, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and low in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. End of chapter 11「for the souls do that which it is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did, when he was an angered, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God, and did he the showbread, 
which it was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them that were with him, but only for the priests? Or have ye not written the law, else that on the seventh day the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath, and are guiltless? But I say unto you, the one greater than the temple is here. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I desire mercy, and not sacrifice, ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And he departed thence, and went into the synagogue. And behold, a man having a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? That it might accuse him. And he said unto them, What man shall there be of you, that shall have one sheep? And if this fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not weigh out on it and lose it out? How much then is a man of more fair than sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath day. Then said to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole as the other. But the Pharisees went out and took counsel against him, else they might destroy him. And Jesus perceiving it with truth and fence, and made for him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by side the prophets, saying, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall declare judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive, nor cry aloud. Now shall any one hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and spoken facts shall he not quench, till he send for judgment unto victory, and in his name shall the Gentiles hope. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the dumb man spake and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed, and said, Is this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This man doth not cast out devils, but by also both the prince of the devils. And knowing their thoughts, he said unto him, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan casteth out Satan, he is divided against itself, how then shall his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I by the Spirit of God cast out devils, then is the kingdom of God come upon you. Or how can one enter into a house of a strong man and spoil his goods, except he first bind a strong man? And then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gath with not with me is with. Therefore I say unto you, Every sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. And whosoever shall speak well against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever shall speak against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, nor in that which is to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. Ye offspring of vipers, how can ye, being heathful, speak good things? Thou the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. The good man out of his good treasure bringeth forth good things, and the evil man out of his evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. And I say unto you, that every owl heard that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the burial of the well, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall stand up in a judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South shall rise up in a judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. But the unclean spirit, when he has gone out of the man, passeth through waterless places, seeking rest, 
and findeth it not. Then he saith, I will return into my house whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more evil than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man becometh worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this evil generation. While he was yet speaking to the multitudes, behold, his brother and his brethren stood without, seeking to speak to him. And one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, seeking to speak to thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother. End of chapter 12、Chapter、thirteen of the Gospel according to Saint Matthew, Revised Version. This group of Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Glenn O'Brien. On that day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and there were gathered unto him great multitudes, so that he entered into a boat and sat. And all the multitudes stood on the beach, and he spake to them many things in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them, and others fell upon the rocky places, where they had not much earth, and straightway they sprang up, because they had no deepness of earth, and when the sun was risen, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away, and others fell upon the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. And others fell upon the good ground and yielded fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Eat the ephes, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that which he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because seeing they see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And unto them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall in no wise understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall in no wise perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, And their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest every they should perceive with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and answer with their heart, and should turn again, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For fairly I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men desire to see the things which ye see, and saw them not, and to hear the things which ye hear, and heard them not. Hear then ye the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the evil one, and snatcheth away that which hath been sown in his heart. This is he that was sown by the wayside, and he that was sown upon the rocky places, that is, he that heareth the word, and straightway receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but endureth for a while, And when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, straightway he stumbleth. And he that was sown among the thorns, that is he the hear of the word, and the care of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, shake the word, and he becometh unfruitful. And he that was sown upon the good ground, that is he the hear of the word, and understandeth it, who fairly beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, Psalm thirty. Another parable said he before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that sowed good seed in his field. But while men swept, his enemy came and sowed tares also among the wheat and went away. But when the blades sprang up and brought forth fruit, there appeared the tares also. 
and the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not so good seed in thy field? Whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. And the servants say unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest have we while ye gather up the tares, ye root up the wheat with them. Let both grow to go unto the harvest. And in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather up first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Another brother said he before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is worse than all seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the heaven come and watch in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which one took, and hid in three meshes of meal, till it was all leavened. All these things spake Jesus in parables unto the multitudes, and without a parable spake he nothing unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things hidden from the foundation of the world. They left the multitudes, and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Explain unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said, He that sowed the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world, and the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom. And the tares are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy that sowed them is the devil, and the others is the end of the world, and the weepers are angels. As therefore the tares are gilded up and burnt with fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall give out of his kingdom all things that cause stumbling, and them that do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. If they have ears, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid. And in his joy he goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a merchant seeking goodly pearls. And having found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea, and gathered of every kind, which, when it was filled, they drew up on the beach. And they sat down, and gathered the good into vessels, but the bad they cast away. So shall it be in the end of the world, the angels shall come forth, and sever the wicked from among the righteous, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They say unto him, Yea. And he said unto them, Therefore every scribe who hath been made a disciple to the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and hold. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence, and coming into his own country, he taught them in a synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished, and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom, and these mighty works? Is not this the kind of son? Is not his brother called Mary, and his brethren James, and Joseph, and Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offering in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honour, save in his own country, and in his own house. And he did not many my works there because of their unbelief. End of chapter 13《Chapter 14 of the Gospel According to St. Matthew, Revised Version》This web of Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien At that season, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report concerning Jesus, and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist, he is risen from the dead, and therefore do these powers work in him. For Herod great hold on John, and bound him, and put him into prison for the sake of Herodias, 
is by Pharaoh's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Elf's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced in the midst, and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being put forth by her mother, saith, Give me ear in the charge of the head of John the Baptist. And the king was grieved, but for the sake of his oaths, and of them which said had meat with him, he commanded it to be given, and he sent, and buried John in a prison. And his head was brought in a charger, and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came, and took up the corpse, and buried him. And they went and told Jesus. Now when Jesus heard it, he withdrew from fence in the boat, to a desert place apart. And when the multitudes heard thereof, they followed him on foot from the cities. And he came forth, and saw a great multitude, and he had compassion on them, and healed their sick. And when even was come, the disciples came to him, saying, The place is desert, and the time is already past. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages, and buy themselves food. But Jesus said unto them, They have no need to go away, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them ever to me. And he commanded the bold Jews to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven he pressed, and broke and gave the words to the disciples, and the disciples to the multitudes. And they did all eat, and were filled. And they took out that which remained over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And they that did eat were about five thousand men, besides women and children. And straightway he constrained the disciples to enter into the boat, and to go before him unto the other side, till he should send the multitudes away. And after he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when even was come, he was there alone. But the boat was now in the midst of the sea, distressed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night he came unto them, walking upon the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is an apparition. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered them and said, Lord, if it be foul, bid me come to thee upon the waters. And he said, Come. And Peter went down from the boat and walked upon the walls to come to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and began to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, and took hold of him, and saith unto him, All fell through the faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were gone up into the boat, the wind ceased. And they that were in the boat worshipped him, saying, of a truth fell out the Son of God. And when they had crossed over, they came to the land, unto Gansoet. And when the men of that place knew him, they sent into all that region round about, and brought unto him all that were sick. And they besought him that they might only touch the border of his garment, and as many as touched were made whole. End of chapter 14「Chapter 15 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This web of Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. Then there come to Jesus from Jerusalem Pharisees and scribes, saying, Why do five disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. And he answered and said unto them, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God said, Honour thy father and thy mother, and he that speaketh evil of father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, that wherewith thou mightest have been profited by me is given to God, he shall not honour his father. 
and ye have made void the word of God because of your tradition. Ye hypocrites, were the Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people honoureth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as the doctrines the precepts of men. And he called to them the multitude, and said unto them, Hear, and understand, not that which entereth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which proceedeth out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Then came the disciples, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father planted not shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they are blind guides, and if the blind guide the blind, both shall fall into a pit. And Peter answered and said unto him, Declare unto us the parable. And he said, Are ye also even yet without understanding? Perceive ye not, that whatsoever goeth into the mouth passeth into the belly, and is cast out into the draught? But the things which proceed out of the mouth come forth out of the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart come forth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, wailings. These are the things which defile the man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not the man. And Jesus went out thence, and withdrew into the parts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanitish woman came out from those borders, and cried, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent but unto the washed sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It is not meet to take the shell's bread and cast it to the dogs. But she said, Yea, Lord, for even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it done unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was healed from that hour. And Jesus departed thence, and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee. And he went up into the mountain, and sat there. And there came unto him great multitudes, even with them the lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others. And they cast them down at his feet, and he healed them, insomuch that the multitude wondered, when they saw the dumb speaking, the maimed whole, and the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they glorified the God of his well. And Jesus called unto him his disciples, and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days, and have nothing to eat. And I would not send them away fasting, lest haply they faint in the way. And the disciples say unto him, Whence should we have so many woes and desert place as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus saith unto them, How many woes have ye? And they said, Seven, and a few small fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven woes and the fishes, and he gave thanks and break, and gave to the disciples, and the disciples to the multitudes. And they did all eat, and were filled. And they took out that which remained over of the broken pieces, some baskets full. And they that did eat were four thousand men, besides women and children. And he set away the multitudes, and entered into the boat, and came into the boss of Magadan. End of chapter 15「sixteen of the Gospel according to St. Matthew with Fi's version this ripple fox recording is in the public domain recording by Gwen O'Brien and the Pharisees and Sadducees came and tempting him asked him to show them a sign from heaven but he answered and said unto them when it is evening ye say it will be fair weather for the heaven is red and in the morning it will be fair weather today for the heaven is red and roaring. 
Ye know how to discern the face of the heaven, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. And even an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of Jonah. And he left them, and departed. And the disciples came to the other side, and forgot to take bread. And Jesus said unto them, Take aid, and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, We took no bread. And Jesus, perceiving it, said, O ye of real faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have no bread? Do you not yet perceive, now remember the five rows of the five thousand, and how many buses ye took up? Now the seven rows of the four thousand, and how many buses ye took up? How is it that ye do not perceive that I spake not to you concerning bread? But we were of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then understood they out that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Jesus came into the paths of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And also say unto thee, That thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he the disciples that they should tell no man that he was the Christ. From that time began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and the third day be raised up. And Peter took him, and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall never be unto thee. But he turned, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, saying, Thou art a stumbling block unto me, for thou mindest not the things of God, but the things of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever would save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what shall a man be provided if he shall gain the whole world, and for his life? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall he render unto every man according to his deeds. Verily I say unto you, There be some of them that stand here, which shall in no wise taste of death. Do they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom? End of chapter 16。Chapter 17 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version。This group of Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter, and James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And it was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his garments became white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elisha talking with him. And Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be there, if thou wilt, I will make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elisha. While it was yet speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the crowd, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face, and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them, and said, Arise, and be not afraid. 
and lifting up their eyes, they saw no one save Jesus only. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, and to the Son of Man be risen from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that worship us first come? And he answered and said, Elisha indeed cometh, and shall restore all things. But I say unto you, that the way she is come already, and they knew him not, but did unto him whatsoever they listed. Even so shall the Son of Man also summon of them. Then understood the disciples they spake unto them of John the Baptist. And when they were come unto the multitude, there came to him a man, kneeling to him, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic, and suffereth grievously. For oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft times into the water. And I brought him to five disciples, and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him ever to me. And Jesus rebuked him, and the devil went out from him, and the boy was cured from that hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, and said, why could not we cast it out? And he saith unto them, Because of your little faith, for fairly I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be delivered up into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised up and they were exceeding sorry. And when they were came to Capernaum, they that received our shekel came to Peter, and said, Doth not your master Peter our shekel? He saith, Yea. And when he came into the house, Jesus spake first to him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? The kings of the earth, from whom do they receive toll or tribute? From their sons or from strangers? And when he said, From strangers, Jesus said unto him, Therefore the sons are free. But lest he cause them to stumble, go thou to the sea, and cast a hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a shekel, that take, and give unto them for me and thee. End of chapter 17。Chapter 18 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew Revised version. This web of Fox coin is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. In that hour came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called to him a real child, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Fairly I say unto you, Except ye turn, and become as little children, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this royal child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall cause one of these little ones which believe on me to stumble, it is probable for him that a great millstone should be hanged about his neck, and that he should be sunk in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of acacias of stumbling, for it must needs be that the occasions come, but woe to that man through whom the occasion cometh. And if thy hand or thy foot cause the feet to stumble, cut it off, and cast it from thee. It is good for thee to enter into life maimed or halt, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into eternal fire. And if thine eye cause the feet to stumble, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. It is good for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into the hell of fire. See that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven the angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. How think ye, if any man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and go unto the mines, and seek that which goeth astray? And if so be they find it, very I say unto you, he rejoiceth over it more than over the ninety and nine which are not gone astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. And if thy brother sin against thee, 
go, show him his fault between thee and him alone. If he hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he hear thee not, take with thee one or two more, that at the mouth of two witnesses or three every word may be established. And if he refuse to hear them, tell it unto the church. And if he refuse to hear the church also, let it be unto thee as a gentile and a publican. Fairly I say unto you, what things soever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what things soever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Then came Peter, and said to him, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him, until seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would make a reckoning with his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, more was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not wherewith to pay, his lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all they had, and paid to be made. The son therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay for all. And the lord that servant, being moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out, and found one of his fellow servants, which showed him a hundred pence. And he laid hold on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay what thou owest. So his fellow servant fell down and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay that which was due. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were exceeding sorry, and came and told unto their lord all that was done. They sought called him unto him, and saith to him, Thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou besoughtest me. Shouldest not thou also have had mercy on thy fellow servant, even as I had mercy on thee? And his lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due. So shall also my heavenly Father do unto you, if ye forgive not every one his brother from your hearts. End of chapter 18、19. Of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This r i p p l e Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished these words, he departed from Galilee and came to the borders of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. And there came unto him Pharisees, telling him, and saying, Is it lawful for a man to pull away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said, Have ye not read that he which made them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man with his father and mother, and shall c r e a n to his wife, and their train shall become one flesh? So that they are no more train, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They said unto him, Why then did Moses command to give a bill of divorcement, and to put her away? He saith unto them, Moses, for your honours of heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it hath not been so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And he that marrieth her when she is put away committeth adultery. The disciples say unto him, If the case of the man is so with his wife, it is not expedient to marry. But he say unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, but they to whom it is given. For they are eunuchs, which were so born from their mother's womb. And they are eunuchs, which were made eunuchs by men, and they are eunuchs, which made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. If they said to receive it, let him receive it. Then were they brought unto him little children, that he should lay his hands on them and pray, and the s o u l s rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer the will of children, and forbid them not to come unto me. 
for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them, and departed thence. And behold, one came to him and said, Master, what good thing shall I do, that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why askest thou me concerning that which is good? One there is who is good, but if thou wouldest enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? And Jesus said, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honour thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I observed. What work I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wouldest be perfect, go, sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But when the young man heard the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he was one that had great possessions. And Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, It is hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, It is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And when the disciples heard it, they were astonished exceedingly, saying, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter, and said unto him, Lo, we have left all, and followed thee. What then shall we have? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath left houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit eternal life. But many shall be last that are first, and first that are last. End of chapter 19Chapter 3 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This Ripper Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man there is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them to his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour, and saw others stay in the marketplace idle. And to them he said, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about six and the ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out, and thought I was staying. And he saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They said unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard. And when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and pay them their hire, beginning with the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. And when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they received it, they murmured against the householder, saying, These was have spent but one hour, and thou hast made them eager unto us which is born the burden of the day and the scorching hate. But he answered and said to one of them, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take out that which is fine, and go thy way. It is my will to give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Or is fine I evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. And as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples apart, and in the way he said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him unto the Gentiles to mock, and the scourge, and to crucify, and the third day he shall be raised up. Then came to him the mother of the sons of Zebedee with her sons, worshipping him, and asking a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wouldest thou? She saith unto him, Command that these my two sons may sit, 
one thy right hand, and one thy left hand, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They say unto him, We are able. He saith unto them, My cup indeed ye shall drink. But to say on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but is for them for whom it hath been prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation concerning the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him, and said, You know that the rulers of Gentiles lorded over them, and their great ones exercised authority over them. Not so shall it be among you, but whosoever would become great among you shall be your master. And whosoever would be first among you shall be a servant, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to master, and to give his life a ransom for many. And as they went out from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men standing by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, that they should hold their peace. But they cried out the more, saying, Lord, have mercy on us, thou son of David. And Jesus was still, and called them, and said, What will ye that I should do unto you? They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. And Jesus, being moved with compassion, touched their eyes, and straightway they received their sight, and followed him. End of chapter 3、Chapter、one of the Gospel according to Saint Matthew, revised version. This super fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, unto the mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the fish that is over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any one say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. Now this has come to pass that it may be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and wine upon an ass, and upon colt the fall of an ass. And the disciples went, and did even as Jesus appointed them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their garments, and he said thereon, And the most part of the multitude spread their garments in the way, and else cut branches from the trees, and spread them in the way. And the multitude that went before him and that followed cried, saying, I s a i d to the son of David, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, I s a i d to him in the eyes. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is the prophet, Jesus, from Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus entered into the temple of God, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold the doves, and he saith unto them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but ye make it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things they did, And the children that were crying in the temple and saying, O s a i d to the son of David, they were moved with indignation, and said unto him, It was to fail what these are saying? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, did ye never read, How the most of those and sucklings fell as to perfected praise? And he left them, and went forth out of the sea to Bethany, and watched there. Now in the morning, as he returned to the sea, he hungered, and seeing a fig tree by the wayside, He came to it, and found nothing thereon but w e e s only. And he saith unto it, Where there be no fruit from thee henceforth for ever. And the maid who the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marvelled, saying, How did the fig tree and maid who wither away? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do what is done to the fig tree, but even if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou taken up and cast into the sea, it shall be done. In all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching, 
and said, But what a filthy doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one question, which if ye tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The Baptist of John, whence was it? From heaven or from men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, it will say unto us, Why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say from men, we feed the multitude, for all hold John as the prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We know not. He also said unto them, Never tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A man had two sons. He came to first and said, Son, go out today in the vineyard. But he answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented himself and went. And he came to his second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Wherefore the train did the will of his father? They say, The first. Jesus saith unto them, Very I say unto you, that the publicans and hearts go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and hearts believed him, and ye, when ye saw it, did not even repent yourselves outward, that ye might believe him. Here another parable. There was a man that was a householder, which prayed a vineyard, and set a hedge against it, and digged a wine press in it and built a tower, and laid it out to husbandmen, and went into another country. And when the season of the fruits drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen to receive his fruits. And the husbandmen took his servants, and beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them in like manner. But afterward he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reference my son. But the husbandmen, when they saw the son, said among themselves, This the hare, come, let us kill him, and take his inheritance. And they took him, and cast him forth out of the vineyard, and killed him. When therefore the Lord of the vineyard shall come, what will he do unto these husbandmen? They say unto him, It will miserably destroy this miserable man, and will wet out the vineyard and other husbandmen, we shall winter him to fruits in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, did ye never read in the scriptures? The stone which the birds rejected, the same was burned ahead of the corner, this was from the Lord, and as well as no eyes. Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken away from you, and shall be given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And he that falleth on this stone shall be blown to pieces. But whomsoever it shall fall, it will scatter him as dust. And when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard these parables, they perceived that he spake of them. And when they sought to wait all on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. End of chapter 21. Chapter 22 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This web of Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Glenn O'Brien. And Jesus answered and spake again in parables unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king, which made a marriage feast for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the marriage feast, and they would not come. Again he sent for other servants, saying, Tell them that are bidden, Behold, I have made way my dinner, my oxen and my fat wings are killed, and all things away, come to the marriage feast. But they made weight of it, and made their ways, one to his own farm, and now to his merchandise, and the rest great hands on his servants, and they treated them shamefully, and killed them. But the king of Swath, and sent his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burnt their city. Then said he to his servants, The way is way, but they that were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore unto the pilings of the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage feast. And those servants went out into the highways, and go to give all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was filled with guests. But when the king came in to behold the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how comest thou in heaven not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him out into our darkness. 
there shall be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few chosen. Then went the Pharisees, and took counsel how they might ensnare him in his talk. And they sent to him their disciples, and the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth, and carest not for any one, but thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived the wickedness, and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this marriage in superscription? They said unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Went it therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And when they heard it, they marveled, and left him, and went their way. On that day came to him Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up say unto his brother. Now do it with our seven brethren. And the first married and deceased, and every no he left his wife unto his brother. In like way the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And after them all the women died. In the resurrection therefore, whoso shall be of the seven, for they all had her. But Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as angels in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitudes heard it, they were astonished at his teaching. But the Pharisees, when they heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, gathered themselves together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, tending him, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said unto him, Thou shalt love the world thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second quake unto it is this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments hang of the old law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What think ye of the Christ? Who signs he? They said unto him, The son of David. He saith unto them, How then doth David in his bird call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit on my right hand, to I put thine enemies underneath thy feet. If dead, then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, now does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. End of chapter 22Chapter 23 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This web of Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. Then spake Jesus to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. All things therefore whatsoever they bid you, these do and serve. But do not ye utter their works, for they say and do not. Yea, they bind every burns and grievous to be born, and weigh them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not bruise them with their finger. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. For they break both their phylacteries, and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the chief priests at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the salutations in the marketplaces, and to be called Ben Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is a teacher, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father on the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even the Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be humbled, and whosoever shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye shut the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye enter not in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering in to enter. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye come at sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he has become so, ye make him twofold more a son of hell than yourselves. 
Woe well, unto you, you blind guides, we say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the God of the temple, it is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether it is greater, the gold, or the temple that have sanctified the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gift that is upon it, it is a debtor. Ye blind, for whether it is greater, the gift, or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. He therefore that sweareth by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And he that sweareth by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that sweareth by the heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye tithe minted Annas and common, and have left undone the weightier mass of the law, judgment and mercy and faith. But these ye ought to have done, and not to have left the other undone. Ye blind guys, which tread out the gnat, and swallow the camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye quince the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full from extortion and excess. Fell blind Pharisee, quince first the inside of the cup and of the platter, that the outside thereof may become clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which outwardly appear beautiful, but inwardly are full of dead man's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but inwardly ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and garnish the tombs of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we should not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye witness to yourselves that ye are sons of them that slew the prophets. Fear ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye offspring of vipers, how shall ye escape the judgment of hell? Therefore, behold, I say unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, so of them shall ye kill and crucify. And some of them shall ye scourge in the synagogues, and persecute from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of Abel the righteous unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Barachia, whom ye threw between the sanctuary and the altar. Verily I say to you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killed the prophets, and stone of them that are sent unto her. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered the chickens under her wings, and ye would not? Behold, your house is swept unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. End of chapter 23「The Gospel According to St. Matthew, Revised Version」This web of Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien And Jesus went out from the temple, and was going on his way. And his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. But he answered and said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he said unto Mount Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man lead you astray. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall lead many astray. And ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For these things must needs come to pass, but the end's not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and earthquakes in diverse places. But all these things are the beginning of travail. Then shall they deliver you up unto tribulation, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all the nations for my name's sake. And then shall many stumble, and shall deliver up one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall lead many astray. And because iniquity shall be multiplied, the love of the many shall wax cold. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. 
and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a testimony unto all the nations, and then shall the end come. When therefore ye see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of by Daniel the prophet, saying the holy place, with him that we doth understand, then let them that are in Judea flee unto the mountains. Let him that is on the house top not go down to take out the things that are in his house. Let him that is in the field not return back to take his cloak. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. For then shall be great tribulation, such as hath not been from the beginning of the world unto now, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days had been shortened, no flesh would have been saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Christ, or here, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wars, so as to be astray, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you beforehand, if therefore they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, go not forth. Behold, he is in the inner chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh forth from the east, and is seen even unto the west, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. Wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send for his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now from the fig tree when a parable, when the branch is now become tenor, and put forth his leaves, ye know that the summer is nigh. Even so ye also, when ye see all these things, know ye that he is nigh, even at the doors. Fairly I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away, till all these things be accomplished. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Both that day and hour knoweth no one, not even the angels of heaven, neither the Son, but the Father only. And as were the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days which were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until they did not enter into the ark, and they knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall be the coming of the Son of Man. Then shall two men be in the field, one is taken and one is left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one is taken and one is left. Watch therefore, for ye know not on what day your Lord cometh. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what watch the thief was coming, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken through. Therefore be ye also ready, for in an hour that ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his squad hath set over his household, to give them their food in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his squad, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he will set him over all that he hath. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord tarrieth, and shall begin to be his fellow servants, and shall eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord that servant shall come in a day when he expecteth not, and an hour when he knoweth not, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. End of chapter 3 4. Chapter 25 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, with highest version. This Ripper Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lambs, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For the foolish, when they took their lambs, took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. Now while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come ye forth to meet him. 
Then all those virgins arose, and trimmed their lambs. And the voice said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are going out. But the wise answered, saying, But venture there will not be enough for us and you, go you rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went away to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Outward come also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Fairy, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know not the day nor the hour. For it is as when a man, going into another country, called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his several ability, and he went on his journey. Straightway he that received the five talents went and traded with them, and made other five talents. In like manner he also that received the two gained other two. But he that received the one went away and did in the earth, and hid his horse money. And after a long time the Lord of these servants cometh, and maketh a reckoning with them. And he that received the five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Lo, I have gained other five talents. He sought said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been fair over a few things, I will serve thee over many things. And to fell into the joy of thy Lord. And he also that received the two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Lo, I have gained other two talents. He sought said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been favour over a few things, I would serve thee over many things, and to fell into the joy of thy Lord. And he also there received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know thee that fell out a hard man, wherein where thou didst not so, and gathering where thou didst not scatter. I was afraid, and went away, and if I talent in the earth, lo, thou hast fine own. But his sword answered and said to him, Thou wicked and sorrowful servant, thou knewest that I weep where I sowed not, and gave where I did not scatter. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the bankers, and at my coming I should have received back mine own with interest. Take ye away therefore the town from him, and give it unto him that hath the ten towns. For unto every one the hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not, even that which he hath shall be taken away. And cast ye out the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There shall be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. But when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the angels with him, then shall he sit on the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all the nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd separateth the sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and now the king prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was anhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee anhungered, and fed thee? Or a thirst, and gave thee drink? And where saw we thee a stranger, and took me in? Or naked, and clothed thee? And when saw he thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto him, Fairy, I say to you, Inasmuch as ye did it unto one of these my brethren, even of these waste, ye did unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, in the eternal fire which is prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was anhungered, and ye give me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye give me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall I also answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in anger, or a first, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Fairly I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not unto one of these least, ye did not unto me. And these shall go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life.
and I've tried to try five. Chapter 26 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This little fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these words, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days the Passover cometh, and the Son of Man is delivered up to be crucified. Then were gathered together the chief priests and the elders of the people, under the court of the high priest, who were called Caiaphas. And they took counsel together that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, there is a tumult arise among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, and also summoned the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster cruise of exceeding precious ointment, and she poured it upon his head, as he sat at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purse is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. But Jesus, perceiving it, said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she poured this ointment upon my body, she did to prepare me for burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, that also which this woman hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Jesus Iscariot, went unto the chief priests, and said, Where are ye willing to give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they weighed unto him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time he sought opportunity to deliver him unto them. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where would thou that we make way for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the seat of such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I keep the Passover of thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had pointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when even was come, he was sitting at meat with the twelve disciples. And as they were eating, he said, Fairly I say unto you, the one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began to say unto him, everyone, Is it I, Lord? And he answered and said, He that dipped his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The salmon goeth, even as it is written of him. But woe unto that man through whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good word for that man if he has not been born. And Jesus, which betrayed him, answered and said, Is thy rabbi? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and breast and brake it. And he gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and gave thanks, and gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is by blood of the covenant, which is shed for many unto remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day which I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sent a hymn, they went out unto the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, O ye shall be offended in me this night, for this rain I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter answered and said unto him, If all shall be offended in thee, I will never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night, before cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Even if I must die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here, while I go yonder and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and sore troubled. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Abide ye here, and watch with me. And he went forth a little, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, where this cup pass away from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them saying, and saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again a second time he went away, and prayed, saying, O my father, 
if this cannot pass away, as that I drink it, thy will be done. And he came again and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them again, and went away, and prayed a third time, saying again the same words. Then cometh he to the disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Arise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that betrayeth me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas one of the twelve came, and with him a great multitude of swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, they see, take him. And straightway he came to Jesus, and said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, do that for which thou art come. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus, and took him. And behold, while them that were with Jesus stretched out his hand, and drew his sword, and spoke to the servant of the high priest, and struck off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into its place. For they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Or thinkest thou that I cannot beseech by father, and he shall now even send me more than twelve reaches of angels? How then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? In that hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are you come out as against a robber with swords and staves to seize me? I sat there in the temple teaching, and ye took me not. For this is come to pass, that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him, and fled. And they that had taken Jesus led him away to the elders of Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and elders were gathered together. The peer followed him afar off, under the court of the high priest, and entered in, and sat with the officers to see the end. Now the chief priests and the old council sought false witness against Jesus, that might put him to death. And they found it not, for many false witnesses came. And afterward came two, and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God, and to burn in three days. And the high priest stood up, and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is that which this verse is against thee? But Jesus saw his peace. And I priest said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou wilt tell us whether thou wilt be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Henceforth ye shall see the Son of Man sitting in the white hand of power, and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest went his garments, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Bold, now he hath heard to press me, what think ye? They answered and said, He is worthy of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffet him. And some smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that struck thee? Now Peter was sitting without in the court, and a maid came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him, and saith unto them that were there, This but also was with Jesus the Nazarene. And again he denied with an oath, I know not the man. And after a little while they that stood by came and said to Peter, Of a truth thou also art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, I know not the man. And straightway the cock crew, and Peter remembered the words which Jesus had said, Before cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out, and writ bitterly. End of chapter 36「十三、of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, revised version。This w i p p e r fox recording is in the public domain。Recording by Gwen O'Brien。Now when morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bowed him, and led him away, and delivered him up to Puati the governor. Then Jesus, which betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See thou to it. And he cast down pieces of silver into the sanctuary, and departed. And he went away and hanged himself. 
and the chief priests took the pieces of silver, and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is the piece of blood. And they took counsel, and brought with them the pot's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the three pieces of silver, the price of him that was prized, whom certain of the children of Israel did prize, and they gave them for the past field as the world appointed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then saith Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they were asked against thee? And he gave him no answer, not even to one word insomuch that the governor marvelled greatly. Now at the feast the governor was wont to release unto the multitude one prisoner, whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner, called Barabbas. When therefore they were gathered together, Puati said unto him, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas, or Jesus which is called Christ? For he knew that the envy dared deliver him up. And while he was sitting on the judgment seat, he so said unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that righteous man? For I have sold many things today in a dream because of him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the bold Jews that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. But the governor answered and said unto him, Whether of a dream will ye that I will raise unto you? And they said, Barabbas. But he saith unto him, What then shall I do unto Jesus which is called Christ? They all say, Let him be crucified. And he said, why, what evil have he done? But they cried out exceedingly, saying, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he prevailed nothing, but rather that a tumult was arising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this righteous man, see ye to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he unto them Barabbas, but Jesus was scourged and delivered to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the palace and gathered unto him the whole band. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And they prayed a crown of thorns and put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they kneeled down before him and mocked him, saying, Hell, King of the Jews. And they spared upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took off from him the robe, and put on him his garments, and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Salain, Simon by name. Him they compelled to go with them, they might bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Gogolfa, they to say the place of skull, they gave him wine to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted it, he would not drink. And when they had crucified him, the party scars among them, cousin lots, and they sat and washed him there. And they set up over his head his accusation when This is Jesus the King of the Jews. Then are there crucified with him two robbers, one on the right hand and one on the left. And they that passed by wailed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou did destroyest the temple, and buildest it in three days, save thyself. He fell out the Son of God, come down from the cross. The white men also, the chief priests mocking him, with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. He is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and he will believe on him. He trusteth on God, let him deliver him now, if he desireth him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the ones also that were crucified with him cast upon him the same reproach. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, son of Bashtani, that is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood there, when they heard it, said, This man called Elijah. And straightway one of them ran, and took a sponge, and filled it with vinegar, and put it on a weed, and gave him to drink. And the rest said, Wet be, 
let us see whether a wife should come up to save him. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks were rent, and the tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints that had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now the centurion, and they that were with him watching Jesus, when they saw the earthquake, and the things that were done, feared exceedingly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women were there beholding from afar, which had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. And when even was come, there came a rich band from Arimathea, named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. This band went to Puati and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Puati commanded it to be given up. And Joseph took the body and wrote it in a clean linen cloth and weighed it in his own new tomb, which he had own held in a rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary sent over against the sepulchre. Now on the morrow, which is the day after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees were gathered together unto Puati, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, While he was yet alive, after three days I rise again. Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure unto the third day, lest Apri his disciples come and steal him away, and say unto the people, He has risen from the dead, and the last hour will be worse than the first. Puati said unto him, Ye have a guard, go your way. Make it as sure as ye can. So they went, and made the book ashore, soon the stone, the guard being with them. End of chapter 27。Chapter 28 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version. This Ripple Fox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Gwen O'Brien. Now, late on the Sabbath day, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, come Mary Magdalene and Arthur Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was as lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him the watchers did quake, and became as dead men. And the angels answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which hath been crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, even as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly, and tell his disciples, He is risen from the dead, and lo, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they depart quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and went to bring his disciples word, and behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail! And they came and took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then saith Jesus unto them, Fear not, go tell my brethren that they depart into Galilee, and then shall they see me. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guards came into the city, and told unto the chief priests all the things that were come to pass. And when they were assembled with the elders, and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night, and stole him away while he slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him, and rid you of care. So they took the money, and did as they were taught. And this thing was spread abroad among the Jews, and continued unto this day. But the eleven disciples went into Galilee, unto the barn where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and spake unto them, saying, O of all ye have been given unto me in heaven and on earth, go ye therefore, and make the sons of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. End of chapter 28
End of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Revised Version.